Hello and welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we'll be building a chart which is actuals versus target with variances in these arrows. So you can clearly see the blue indicates the actual, and then we have a diamond, you know, a line with a diamond end or an arrow which represents the target. And the differences are highlighted with arrows, red arrows pointing downward for negative variances where the actuals have not met the target. And then the green arrows pointing upward, they represent the cases where the actuals have exceeded the target. And we also have the labels here, which clearly represent, okay, this is negative 41, which means 41 is the difference between the actual and the target, and the actual is less, so it's negative. Uh, in this case, project C, there is 16 positive, which means the actual is greater than the target by 16. And this type of chart, I mean, we have done a similar chart uh, in a previous video. This is just representing the same with a slightly different visual effect. Um, I want to credit a site parkaccountants.com, um, where they have a very detailed video and tutorial around how to build this type of chart. Um, I have made a few tweaks on my own, but however, the credit should go to them, which is where I learned this chart from. So let's get started in this video. So here is the raw data we'll be dealing with in this video. So we have nothing but, uh, you know, project uh, in my case, and then actual and the target. Um, so you have three columns, and now we'll be building some extra columns in order to facilitate that visual effect. So the first thing, um, just like in one of the previous videos that I did, we'll build a baseline, and this is nothing but the minimum of the actual and the target values. And once we have that, then we go to positive variance calculation. Positive variance is if the actual is greater than the target, then we say actual minus target. Otherwise, NA close. And now this is the positive variance when there is one. If there is no positive variance, it will give NA. Same thing in the opposite direction. If the actual is less than the target, then we do target minus actual. Otherwise, we do NA. So I'm just going to do NA close. This one will give us the actual value. Uh, when there is a negative variance, but note that it's an absolute thing, not a negative 38, it'll give 38. And then I'm going to create, um, actually, this is good for now. I'm going to go ahead and select all these and then go insert. I'm actually going to do a stack column chart, okay? I'm going to do a stack column chart, and it's going to give me something like this, which is not what I want. I want the projects to be in the x-axis, but it's very quick to change that. Click on the switch row and column option it now will give you projects in the x-axis and all these five different series now i'm going to right click change chart type and go to combo and make sure that you know excel then change it did change it i don't want this to be um clustered column uh on three and then there are two lines what i want to do now is to move the actual and the target to the secondary axis that's the first step and I want them to be, that's clustered column is okay. But the base positive variance and the negative variance, I want these to be stacked. Okay, so I'm going to choose stacked for all these three. This is where you need to be at this step. Actual and the target, secondary, cluster, base, positive, negative variance. They are stacked, primary axis. Okay, so now your, your view should be something like this. Now we'll start formatting. So I'm going to move this over here, press control one so we can have the side panel here. Now I'm going to go and in the drop down here, I'm going to choose actual and go to the series options and I'm going to choose minus 50%. Uh, and then uh, this is, we are still in the actual CD. So I'm going to go here and say no fill. And I'm going to go to the target series. I want to add error bars. Okay, I'll add error bars. And I don't want to fill anything um, in the target series also. So I'm going to do no fill. But now I'm going to go to the Y error bars for the target. And I want to make this line. So maybe I want to do this as a, a little bit dark gray. And I will increase this. And at the beginning arrow type, I want to use this diamond arrow. Go to the error bar options. Choose minus, no cap. 100%, okay? And one thing I am going to do now is to go and right click and select data. 
if your target is not above the actual series, just move them up. So what is happening here is the target series will be the left and then actual will be the right. But we have made the actual with no fill, so you can't see that yet, but we'll, we'll fix that soon. But your target value, you can clearly see now it is a line with a, um, a diamond arrow at the end. So if I make this a little bit thicker, you can start seeing them. So the target is there. Now let's focus on the other uh, series. I'm going to click on the chart. I'm going to go to the base series. I'm going to do a solid fill, but I want that fill to be the light uh, color. So I'm going to choose the light blue here and choose the positive variance. Make sure you choose the exact value, exact color. Okay. The important thing here is the base. And when you add on top of that, you get um, the uh, positive variance, you will get the actual, right? So that's how it is going to be um, that we are going to represent the actual. So now the light blue column indicates the actual, okay? Now we have the actual um, uh, visual appearing, but the purple color is still the negative variance, right? I don't want the negative variance to be with that color. So go to negative and choose no fill. So it goes away. Great. Now, how do I get my arrows? So this is what we're going to focus next. I'm going to go and say, add error bars to your negative variance series. And if I go here, now there is an error bar. So I'm going to click on that. And now I'm going to go minus, no cap, 100%. So it'll put an arrow now. And then I want the ending arrow type to be, let's say this arrow. So now you start seeing that there's an arrow appearing. I'm going to choose, this is negative. So I'm going to choose a red color um, version. And then I, I'll do the same thing for positive. So go to positive variance. In the plus, add error bars. And on the right side panel, you know, you can now choose error bars for positive variance. Choose minus, no cap, 100%. So you're going to choose exactly the same. But I'm going to change the, change the color of the line. I want to make it green because it's positive and I will do a uh, beginning arrow type here instead of the end arrow type. It's because the uh, arrows, I want the positive variances arrows to pointing upward and the negative to be downward. And so that's the choice. And then now this, make sure that it's the same width. So if I'm making this two point, then I want to make this as two point also. Okay, so they are equal. So now you can start seeing that there's an actual, there's a target, and there are arrows. Now the part that is missing here is the labeling. Um, for labeling, for example, if I click on the base series, you can click there. If, if that's not very easy, you can always go in the drop down and choose series base. Go uh, and add a label, okay? Add data labels. Now it will add a label and we can move that label. I'd like to move it to the inside base here. And here it is showing the base value. I don't want the base one. I want the actual value. So what I can do is to uncheck the value and take the value from actual series. Okay. There we go. So now it actually is the actual value. So this is, so far, everything is looking good. The only thing that we need to add now is to get the um, variance amount to be labeled on the top of the arrows. That is a little bit tricky. <laughs> so we're going to find a way to position the label on the top of the arrow. So what I'm going to do is to, we'll be building a new column calculation. So I'm going to call it max. And this is nothing but, let's take the maximum between actual and target. And then bring that over here. Now, this is for just the positioning. But the actual label we want to show is the variance, you know, whether it's negative or positive, I want to show actual minus, that's not what I meant, um, actual minus target, C4 minus B4. Now, this is the label and this is for positioning. So let's go and right click, select data, add a new series. Um, let's just call it variance, but I'm going to select these values because the position, okay, this is Excel giving me that error. Okay. so. We 
give a name variance, but we choose the values from the positioning, which is the maximum of actual and target. Press OK. And um, the x-axis labeled for this is still projects. That's OK. I'm going to say OK. Now, as the default is the column, so I can always right click and change the chart type and make sure that the new series that we added, which is the variant series, it is in the secondary axis, that's important, but we want it to be a line. So I'm gonna choose a line and make sure that all the other three series, base, uh, positive and the negative, are stacked. But then the target and the actual, which are on the secondary axis are clustered column. And then the variance is the only one that is line on the secondary. So I can click OK. So now I have the line and I can click the line and say, I don't want the line. I actually just want to add a label. So click on plus and choose label. And now Excel will add a label. This is great. And I can choose the label position by clicking on the label, go to label options. And then I can choose above. And this puts the label above the arrows. So this is great. The one final thing we need to do here is this label is actually representing the maximum value, right? And that's because we want these label positions to be at the top. We have used that approach, but I don't want to actually see the value. Um, for example, for project B, I don't want to see 198. I want to see 88 is the variance from the target to the actual. So I'm going to click on these labels, remove the value, go to value from cells, and then choose the variance values. So this will put actually the, the variance negative or positive. It will come through as it is. So now, for example, when there is project D, there is 125 is the actual. The target is actually 187. And the difference is negative 62. So everything is looking good. And we just do the usual formatting, format grid lines. Uh, and then we will do format the title. So we'll add actual versus target with variances. And if in case, for example, you don't want the variance as a number, absolute number, you want it as a percentage, so it's very easy. You can just calculate the percentage. And then instead of providing the label you know, as 88, you can actually calculate it as a percentage and use that series. So that process is still the same. You'll use the same technique to display the labels. And I'm going to click on the outside of the chart. So do uh, border, solid line. We'll change this to rounded corners. So everything is looking good. Uh, we don't need the secondary axis. So I'm going to click on the secondary axis and hit delete to remove it. I'm not going to use the legend as it appears here. Uh, if I am using it, I will actually rename it. So let's try, for example, uh, I know it's. we want to do this at the end because uh, if you rename things in between the series, uh, it can be a little bit confusing to build it. So for example, even though this is base, right? Uh, I'm gonna call this as actual. Okay, I'll explain why. Because you see in the legend now it appears actual is light blue. So I will leave that as it is. Again, this is not the perfect way to do it because Excel, in Excel, we are trying to hack it to make the visual appear like this. So you can rename the series like this to make it as actual as blue line, uh, blue um, shaded, or we can create a legend separately and add it as an image to the chart. Um, so both approaches are okay. And uh, I'm just going to leave this here. And we don't need to show positive variances, negative variances. Uh, I'm even not going to show targets. This is the only one that's relevant. And um, so this target line, if I click on it, I can reduce the from 3 to 2.25 because it was kind of bold. Um, so there we go, uh, actual versus target. And then we have the variances in arrows, different colors for positive and negative, and the actual variance amounts are also displayed exactly as it is. So this completes our effort to create this chart uh, in Microsoft Excel. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching.